As much as Cindy and I love the look of the front steel optional bumper that you can get with a Jeep JL Wrangler Rubicon, I can't say that we've ever really been a fan of the rear bumper. Now we've been meaning to remove this bumper for quite some time now, but we decided to leave it on for our recent trip to Moab. Of course, the idea was that it might help protect our body from getting any damage from it being dragged over rocks or getting bumped on ledges. But as you can see here, the bumper taking the hit actually caused damage to the body itself. The bumper physically moved up enough where it was actually making contact with the rear quarter panel. Needless to say, on this episode of the JL Journal, we're going to show you just how easy it is to remove a factory rear bumper. So I've given this rear bumper a quick look and from what I can tell, there are a total of four nuts, two on either side of the Jeep, and two bolts underneath the bumper itself, which you can see right here, all of which take a 16 millimeter wrench or socket to remove. There is also one wiring harness for the license plate light that will need to be unplugged and that's what we're going to do now. The license plate light is secured to the body in the driver's side rear quarter panel and as you can see here there's a gray locking tab that will need to be pulled first and then you're going to squeeze it and then you can unplug it like that. Now the wiring itself actually has a tab and it's secured to the rear quarter panel body itself and we're going to go ahead and pull that off and there's actually one more tab attached just to the base of the quarter panel and we're going to go ahead and remove it using a trim pry tool. Alright, so now that we have the wiring harness out of the way, uh, we've got these two nuts that are securing the bumper itself to this bracket and we're going to use a 16 millimeter socket to remove them down. Alright, now that we've got all the nuts off, we're going to go ahead and remove the final two bolts that are attaching the bumper to the cross member here. So again, with the 16 millimeter socket, looks like they're going to come out pretty easy. And that should be it. Let's see if it comes off. Alright, so now we got the rear bumper off and much to our surprise we found a few more bits of damage that the bumper was actually causing and you can see it right here. Right on the corner of the quarter panel, right on the base, the very part that we were trying to protect from the rocks, the bumper itself was doing damage. So you can see there's a bolt on the bumper itself, it was making contact right here. So all this time we thought the bumper was actually protecting us, it was actually making damage. So you can see the same thing happened over on the passenger side. Maybe not as severe, but again, same bolts. We're making contact right on the corner and chipping away at the paint. So I'm not 100% sure without putting this thing back on, but it looks like these bolts that were used to help tie in the steel bumper into the substructure, these were making contact right on the edge of the quarter panels. Okay, so now that we have the bumper off, there's a couple brackets that we'd like to take off as well. And as you can see, they're attached to the frame rail on either side. And this one is being held in with the J-hook. We're going to use an 18 millimeter socket to pull it off now. There we go. Put these guys back in. Alright, so on the passenger side, I'm not exactly sure why, 
but the two bolts securing these brackets to the frame rail actually require a socket that's 21 millimeters. So that's what we're gonna do now. Put this on here. Take that off. Okay, so now that we have this damage uncovered and cleaned up, I made sure that it's free of any dirt and grease or anything like that, and now we're gonna go ahead and touch it up. I like to use this three-stage automotive touch-up paint that you can get online. And what I like about it is that it comes in a primer, a base color, and a clear coat. So anytime you go all the way down to metal like you see here, it's always a good thing to come over it with some primer first. Let it dry completely, come back with a base color, let it dry, and then finish it up with some clear coat. So for right now, we're going to go ahead and hit it up with some primer first. Shake it up. Okay, so we applied a couple coats of primer to the damage that we have on our quarter panel. And uh, just to give it a little bit of a tooth because it had broken all the way down to bare metal. Now we're going to apply some touch-up paint. Shake this up. Final step, clear coat. Now that we've got some primer down, a base coat, I'm just gonna top it off with a little bit of clear just to make sure that everything stays in place. It even looks a little bit more like the body color. Now that we have the rear bumper off of our JL, the question is, is what do we do about the rear license plate? So I've been thinking about this for a while and I took this bracket, which was originally installed right here between the J hook and the frame rail. And this is where the bumper physically attached to. And I started thinking that I might be able to recycle this and mount it to one of the points below and use this as the base or at least the original mounting point for a license plate relocation bracket. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna try to make this into a new license plate relocation bracket. So we'll come back over here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a strong tie, depending on where you buy this at. This is also called a Simpson strong tie at Home Depot. I bought this at Lowe's. Uh, it's about 88 cents, it's real cheap. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a bracket that looks very similar to this. I've been making these for a while for our JKs so that I could relocate our license plate on the rear cross member. And that's what we're gonna make. So what we're gonna do first is measure this bracket. We're gonna mark it four and a half. So we know where our center line is. Creating ourselves some guides to where we're going to be bending this. Okay, so now we have all our marks. Now we're going to go ahead and put this into a clamp, a piece of wood, so that we can drill some holes. So ultimately what we're going to be using is a set of uh, quarter by 20 small bolts to pass through here secured in place so we're going to drill some quarter inch holes right here. So now that those holes have been drilled we're going to go ahead and pop this into a vise so we can make our bends. Now again we're going to create a shape similar to this so we'll work from the inside points first and then move to the outside points. Gonna go ahead and bend it over. Take the hammer and just tap it in. And then again, push it over. And there you have it, the bracket that we need. So there's still a little bit of burrs on this. I'm gonna take a file and file them off. Okay, 
Okay, so what I'm gonna do then is take this bracket that I just made, place the bolt through the big hole, take the nut, So if you look down here, the bumper was originally attached to this point here, and there's a built-in washer right into the cross member. So we only need to use one additional washer to secure it in place. I'm gonna put that in there as such. Take our 16 millimeter wrench or socket. Take our license plate. All right. There you have it. Maybe not the perfect solution, but it was cheap. Basically cost nothing except for the hardware I already had in my garage, but uh, recycled parts and now you have a license plate mount again. So all in all, we're really happy that we decided to pull off the rear bumper. While we may put on something else in the future, we actually really like the bumperless look. It's what we've been running on our JKs for quite some time now, and I think it looks great on the JL. So that's what we're gonna be doing for now. Okay, so this is an addendum to the license plate relocation bracket that we just installed on the rear cross member of our Jeep JL Wrangler. So what we wanted to do is to still have some kind of a license plate light for it. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna recycle all the wiring that you can see here that's still attached to the factory rear bumper. And then from eBay or Amazon, you could pick up a couple of these license plate lights that will attach right into the holes of your license plate and we're gonna tie these together and we're gonna install it on our Jeep. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is separate the wiring from the bumper itself. They're just gonna break off because they're one-way push pins. And this last plug right here, just gonna squeeze and pull out. So now we've got the whole wiring and we're gonna be able to recycle it. All right, so we're gonna take our new license plate lights. So that we could see what we're doing, I opened up the tailgate. And we're gonna take off these nuts. Fish light through. Take the nut again. All right, so we're gonna take the factory wiring harness that we just removed from the rear bumper. And as you can see down here, we still have all the original plugs that we're gonna reuse. And so we're gonna go ahead and splice this off so that we can tie it into our license plate lights. So we're gonna pull some of this tape down here, as you can see, and we're gonna go ahead and cut it. And we're gonna strip these wires. Take some insulator ahead of time because we are gonna seal this off. And 
And then the black wires are going to hook up with the black. And we're going to take the white wire with the blue stripe, attach it to the red wires. We're going to go ahead and solder the two together. Okay, those look good. Slide on the insulators. Then we're going to take a heat gun and shrink them. Before we can fish the plug through the frame rail and the body, we're going to have to go ahead and cut off that connection. I'm just going to go ahead and cut off all these connections, or at least these tabs, because they're just going to get in the way. That one's okay. There, at least it's a little bit smaller now. Go ahead and fish the plug through, and then we could probably go up and over again. And then we can plug this in just to make sure that it's going to work. All right, we'll clean up the wiring in just a minute, but let's just make sure the lights are going to work. Yep. They came on. Perfect. And that's all there really is to it. So all I'm going to do now is just clean up the wiring and we should be good to go. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and zip tie some of this wiring out of the way because there's a lot of it. Probably could have cut the wire shorter, but I think this will help at least clean things up a bit. So we can kind of tuck it up and out of the way. Tuck it up into the body. Now the plug is zip tied out of the way, wiring's tucked out of the way. Just to clean things up, I'm going to add on some plastic conduit here. Okay, so that's not too bad. Okay, so now that we have these things positioned more or less, angling down, we're going to go ahead and tighten them up. Okay, there we go. Thanks for tuning in to the JL Journal. We hope that you found the information on how to remove your factory rear bumper and our solution on how to relocate the license plate to be useful. If you're not already a member, we would love to have you visit us over at jlwrangler.com and become a part of our online community. Until next time, keep the shiny side up, all four on the floor, and with any luck, we'll see you on the trail.